Welcome to the top 10 most anticipated comics for November 9th, 2022. Guys, I'm Mike Spider Slayer. Welcome back to Comic Book Corner 2.0. It's never too early to start that pull list for next week, and hopefully this list helps you make decisions on what comic books to buy. But before we dive into it, guys, I gotta give a quick shout out to the Night Library. They have only a few days left on their Kickstarter of Red Hunt Issue 1. Let's check it out. So there's nothing wrong with reading free comic books, so why don't you check out the Night Library? Here at the Night Library, you can find free comics, free manga, free graphic novels, and more. Some books already in the archives? Red Hunt, a gritty action-packed story of violence, monsters, and the blood-crazed hunters who seek them out. Some men hunt the monsters, others they become them. Also available, Song of Stone and Warlock. New content is always in the works and make sure you sign up for the Night Library newsletter for up to the minute updates on latest projects, sweepstakes, and new releases. So not only is the Night Library providing you free comic books, but if you enter your email and join their mailing list, they will send you a free gift. It's a win-win, no risk for you. So check out the nightlibrary.net. I'll leave it in the description box below. The link is in the description box below for you to back that Kickstarter project. Thank you so much. All right, guys, so we're going to kick this bad boy off with the book that's on the hot seat. Goes to a DC Comics book this week, and this goes to Wildcats issue one. Yes, it's the return of the Wildcats, the old 90s property. And we got a new crew of operatives here led by Cole Grif Grifter Cash, right? He's got a whole team here, and we're going to see what happens. This comes off the pages of Batman from, like, a while ago. So, I don't know. I was never, like, a huge fan of the Wildcats, but I'm going to give it a try. Maybe I'll get into it. This book is 32 pages, and this one is $4. Got some cool covers, though. The book that's on the rise because it's getting ready to end is Dark Crisis on Infinite Earths Issue 6 of seven so we got all kinds of crap happening in dark crisis right now we got pharaoh unleashing like his main dark bad guys on all the good guys so what's going to happen in this penultimate issue when it comes to the dark crisis and how is it going to set things further when it comes to the dc universe right i'm not sure i'm really interested though how this actually ends i've loved the action all the way through i thought the artwork has been pretty good you know it's a little bit uh convoluted but still you know i'm enjoying it and again it's amping up so that's why it's on the rise this book is 32 pages and it's five dollars i coming in at number 10 and i can't resist it it is the death of superman 30th anniversary so yes it's been 30 years so the de since the death of superman everyone's read it probably a thousand times they're reprinting it and uh you know what i'm buying it why not and there's multiple covers for it and i think i'm maybe only getting one or two of these books i think there's a few other stories that are in this uh comic as well to kind of make it a little bit different but be aware this one is pricey guys if you don't have the budget for it i definitely say you know only buy one copy if you're that interested or if you want it that bad 80 pages 11 dollars moving on to number nine and you're going to think, why is this so low on your list, Mike? And there's some books that even make my top 10 because this is a solid week for comic books getting ready to come out. There's a lot of good ones and it was hard for me to rank them. So we got coming in at number nine, Batman vs. Robin issue three. Batman has been on the breakneck journey through the DC Universe from Wayne Manor to the House of Secrets and back again. So that's what you got to see in that last issue, right? You got to see Batman go in the House of Secrets and he's trying to put the pieces together to find out what happened to Damien, if he's possessed or what's going on with him. And you wind up getting to see that revelation, how all things have come together from the Book of World's Finest to this book here. And then you got a little bit to see of what's going on with alfred as well really solid book man really really solid uh, a lot of magic though in the last issue and that's what kind of uh 
is not making it on my highest most anticipated this week because I'm not like a huge Supernatural fan, but still a really good read. 48 pages, another expensive book, man. $6. Moving on to number eight. Spider-Man issue two, written by Dan Slott. This continues the whole Spider-Verse situation that's going on. I think Mark Bagley's artwork in this series is really well done. And so far, I know it's only been one issue, Dan Slott has done a pretty good job at letting Mark Bagley draw where Dan Slott can get very wordy or exposition heavy, I should say, and it starts overtaking the comic book and you're just like, oh my God, just shut up. There's too much dialogue. Also, what holds this book down a little bit is we've seen this story before with the Edge of Spider-Verse characters. We've seen Moreland before. What's going to make this series different or this story different and how is this book going to leap forward past the whole Spider-Verse stuff? This is legacy numbering 150 58 and the page count is 32 uh, 32 pages excuse me coming in at number seven another new number one coming out this week from marvel it's fantastic four issue one whatever happened to the fantastic four so there's a new era of the team i uh, love the gorgeous artwork here when it comes to the cover you got alex ross artwork and when it comes to the fantastic four I'm a, it's a hit and miss for me. They can be good, they can be bad. Sometimes Reed, the way he's written, really pisses me off. And uh, he comes like across way, like way too nerdy for me at times. But I felt like Dan Slott, when he wrote Fantastic Four at times, was really good. But once he got into that FF event, it was absolutely just horrible. And I did not like it. So I'm curious to see where the new direction is going to be, what's going to happen with the, with the new... Uh, creative team and, and you know and stuff like that so legacy numbering is 694 36 pages five dollars coming in at number six we have Ghost Rider issue eight this book has been great we've gotten to see Johnny Blaze go through the the ringer of of struggling of him being able to control the spirit of vengeance within and he's had this demon inside of him Wolverine definitely got rid of that demon by kind of doing this lobotomy on him and expelling the demon. The demon wound up coming out and becoming something more, which is now known as the villain called Exhaust. So now we have Johnny Blaze has this new arch nemesis that's like an even darker shadow of himself. Really interesting. And now he's teaming up with Talia War, 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 War Road. Uh, she's an FBI agent that's also has supernatural abilities. So we'll see where this continues now that we're off of this thing that has been inside of his head. Benjamin Percy doing a great job. Legacy numbering 251, 28 pages, $4. Coming in at number five. And again, last time we had this on the most anticipated, it was my number one. It's number five now, and I really enjoy this story. Amazing Spider-Man, issue 13. The Hobgoblin story comes to a conclusion here, and who does this affect the most? Well, it's going to affect Norman Osborn, okay? And this is going to trigger something to get him back on that glider. I think that's what makes him the gold goblin i think that's what it's called and this is what also leads into the whole dark web event i'm really looking forward to it i think this book is well written when it's not interrupted by you know the x-men gala and judgment day and he can have a little bit of room to breathe it shows it in this hobgoblin arc i think it's been fun give it a chance or go back to it i know we'll get back to those six months after this event 28 pages, $4. Coming in at number four, it's all about those new number ones, right? This is from Boom Studios. I had a gut feeling that 8 Billion Genies before it was released was going to be a major hit. I think this book is going to be a lot of fun. I don't know if it will be as good, but this is Specs Issue 1. This is a new series from david m boer who wrote uh canto and the all new firefly so it's about these boys that come across these glasses like x-ray glasses and they've been being bullied and it grants them wishes and i guess they're wishing their bully away or something bad to happen to them and it, it like actually happens so i don't know what powers these glasses you know, possess, but I think that's going to make a very interesting story here. Uh, 
$3.99 for this book. It doesn't give me a page count. Coming in at number three, Spider-Man fans of Craven's Last Hunt are probably highly anticipating this book like I am. This is Spider-Man The Last Hunt. This is issue one. The origins of Craven is finally revealed. The original writer, J.M. DeMattis, continues his story with Craven. Now, I'm really curious to see what this origin story is going to be like. I think this takes place in a time where Spider-Man is powerless. I'm not 100% sure there. I thought that's what I read. And Mary Jane and Peter are in like Portland. So that's something completely different. This definitely piques my interest. Can't wait for this ever since it's been announced. 36 pages and this one is $5. Coming in at number two, we have Dark Ride Issue 2, the amusement park type of uh, series where it's all based off of horror, right? This park was created from a man who killed his wife, which I think the devil gives him these powers to make this park successful. So... It's all horror inspired. I love the introduction to this book. It reminds me of Halloween Horror Nights for you guys that are amusement park fans. You know what I'm talking about. But again, it's this park owner that created this park, which I think has been created of lost souls. Can't wait for this issue. I love the first one. It was my pick of the week. So after this number one, we're not done guys as we're gonna be talking about the noteworthy comics. So don't go anywhere, guys. Number one goes to do a power bomb. This is issue six, the penultimate issue. How can you not deny this book that top spot when it comes to most anticipated? It is so good. The last issue had me on the edge of my seat as I was turning the pages to see what was going to happen. And I never expected what was going to happen, happen. And then we get to see the, the tag team partners that our heroes faced against in the last issue, they got to face off against each other to see which loved one they're going to bring back. But what makes this book so great is not only the fighting and the action, but just all the emotional beats that go into it. The sound effects that go in those boxes where it makes you feel like you're part of the action. This is such a superb book. If you have not gotten your hands on any of these issues, wait for the trade to come out at this point, and I'm telling you, you will enjoy it. You don't have to be a wrestling fan to enjoy it. All right, so now we move on to those noteworthy comics, and the first ones we're gonna be talking about is a few Marvel books. We have Moon Knight issue 17. Next, we have Venom issue 13, which, let me tell you, I did enjoy the most recent issue. The ending was actually pretty cool and i'm looking forward to the next issue just couldn't crack this week's top 10 with all the wonderful books that were in my most anticipated then we move on to dc comics where we have wonder woman issue 793 and the only reason why i'm pointing it out is because pay attention to this cover this is a 90s variant so if you're collecting these 90s variant and you don't care about the story that's why i'm highlighting this particular issue not for the story all right, next we have Nice House on the Lake, issue 11, solid story. I'm gonna have to reread this all over again as it's taken too many breaks, but I really enjoy it. Then we have Jeff Johns' One Shot, The New Golden Age. So looking forward to seeing what that has to offer coming off of the pages of Flashpoint Beyond. And then we move on to our indie books where we have uh, Spawn, issue 335. Great price point, always a lot of fun, lots of action. Stories, team to, stories tend to intertwine with each other where you forget what's going on because there's so many Spawn books now. And then next, we have Radiant Black, issue 19, another solid story. We have two Radiant Blacks in the pages of the comic now, so looking forward to seeing how that continues. And then we have... Gun Honey Blood for Blood, issue three. Very sexy like book, very espionage heavy. Um, reminds you a little bit of 007, but with this girl Pamela Tan, who is this arm specialist. Really pretty solid book. And then from AWA Upshot, we have Year Zero, Vol Volume Zero, issue two, as this deals with the early days of the virus and we get a whole bunch of brand new stories. Can't wait to see what issue two has in order.
So save 15 bucks on your first whatnot purchase today, guys. I'm gonna leave it in the link in the description box below. You can't go wrong with that. It's like me handing you $15 to buy whatever you want. Guys, there's my top 10 most anticipated. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you love the content, I'll leave you more content right here to click on. In fact, this is my top 10 comic book covers of the week. And as always, guys, keep buying, keep collecting, but most importantly, always read your comics. Guys, take care. I'll see you real soon. Bye.